So thank you. It's great to be to be here today. Um, so yes, I'm I'm going to talk to you about our healthy and informed connected communities pro um, project in Michelston, which is on the former Michelston College site in Ely in Cardiff. So. Um, as a starting point, I took the Move More, Eat Well plan and the Reimagining an Aging Population report of, um, of 2019, which uh, were both provide, uh, produced by Cardiff and Vale University Health Board. The reports focus on priority area pledges and themes respectively, and this gave me an inspiration to integrate um, integrate as many of those as possible into the project. It was an opportunity to get everybody thinking about ways to improve lives as a community develops. The six pledge areas um, from the Move More Eat Well plan that I considered relevant are highlighted in green on the slide and the reimagining an aiding population have three themes, um, as you can see at the bottom of the slide, and they were at the heart of what we were trying to achieve. So what were we trying to achieve? After discussions with my colleagues at Waits um, and the architects and Cheryl Williams and our council client, um, um, we, we decided to create an intergenerational programme for people ranging from three years old right through to 65 plus. One of the objectives was to give them the chance to see how the design and planning processes work and how they could have an influence on the final development that was being built. As part of that design, there was a wellbeing village which incorporated a plaza, um, which will be the central area that people can meet, socialise and take part in activities. This linked in beautifully with the inspiration that I found in the previous report. The sessions were held every Monday afternoon at the Ely and Kyra Integrated Children's Centre, which very conveniently was adjacent to the actual site. As you can imagine, we had to prepare to be adaptable in the face of COVID, and some of the interactions included virtual elements, especially uh, with the older people's group. I think it's important for me to note here that reflecting back on the project, they struggled um, uh, the most with engaging with the project for two very clear reasons. Firstly, as with any form of construction development, it means change for a community and not all of the weekly road tenants joined us from the very beginning and unfortunately misinformation was spread and they were under the impression that if they engaged with us that would automatically mean that they'd be moved into the new development once it'd been built and they'd lo lose their existing homes which completely wasn't the case. Um, secondly COVID played a huge part in them not wanting to mix with young people um, as the cases in schools were on the rise in the last three months of last year. And this was completely understandable and we fully um, respected and supported their decisions not to attend in person, obviously. Um, to remedy this, we set up Teams meetings to get their input, which at times proved a bit tricky with technology, but we persevered and we were able to gather some great ideas from them for the development. So every week for roughly about 10 weeks, we spent two hours working through focus sessions, which each had a specific theme to them. The participants worked with a mixture of public bodies, private companies and third sector organisations. The sessions were really fun and interactive, with lots of positive feedback on the ideas that, that they came up with. And we also managed, had to manage their expectations so that everyone didn't get too carried away. <laughs> It was also a chance for the young people to see some of the lesser known roles in construction, which helped give a very positive impression rather than the stereotypical rough and ready idea that sometimes we are labelled with. As you can see here, we worked with a quite a wide range of key partners to deliver this project. We've got council um, uh, representation there. We've got obviously the, the schools and and um, the the older persons group through the Cardiff uh, 
community living scheme. Uh, we've got our partners, Powell Dobson Architects, PRP Architects, um, the Tier Collective, who are our la landscape architects. We've got Play Wales, we've got Sport Cardiff and Grow Cardiff as well. Here is just a snapshot of our overall programme plan, which then led us on to planning each focus session with the project team and the specific key delivery partner. The project team consisted of us at Waits, Powell Dobson, the Tier Collective and Council, um, Cardiff Council Development and Regeneration Dep Department. We were able to explain all about the different types of buildings that would be built on site. Um, and we were able to share and discuss with everyone the different outside spaces that we were looking for ideas for. The focus sessions were led by our key delivery partners and supported by the project team. And these included Isla from Grow Cardiff, focusing on community gardening, um, Ben from Sport Cardiff, who focused on moving more and making um, areas accessible for all. And uh, the wonderful Marianne from Play Wales, who helped the children to explore the importance of imaginative play rather than relying on the traditional outdoor play equipment that can limit children's play experiences. So once everybody had had their focus sessions, they collated all their ideas and they were asked uh, which of the six outside spaces they would like to work on. Um, the year six pupils from Penkyra Primary chose the plaza. The hillside walk went to the year two pupils from Penkyra. The community garden was taken on by the nursery children at the Elian Kyra Children's Centre. The green walk were taken by the year sixes. The wild wood area were taken by the year sevens at Cardiff West Community High School. And finally, the drainage pond was taken by the year two pupils at Penkyra. Here we've got a little bit of a snapshot of some of the some of the photographs we took. Um, the nursery children here are working with uh, uh, precedence imagery for one of the plans and mood boards that they made. Um, then there's Isla and Ezra out on one of the two site visits we had. It was very, very windy and bless them. They managed to keep hold of their plans. Um, here's Mrs Blackmore, who helped Jackson by scribing his ideas for his plan. Mrs Powell and year two children were investigating different play activities that they would like to try. And this led to discussions about what sort of space and equipment the site would need to provide to make this opportunity happen. Then we go on to Ben from Sport Cardiff, giving us food for thought when thinking about how people of all ages and abilities could move around the site in creative and different ways. We also discuss the use of technology and incentives for people to be active around the site. And then we go to the Year 7s at Cardiff West Community High School with their mood board that they created during their Grow Cardiff session at their school. This is one of the hybrid sessions, the next, the next picture, where we had PRP architects in London, the Wheatley Road tenants um, in Wheatley Road, and all of the nursery and primary school children in person. Um, Cardiff West had quite a lot of difficulties in attending some of the sessions in person due to lack of minibus drivers at school. And this was a, a, a knock on effect of the continuous staff shortages down to COVID. However, we got around this by hosting a few extra sessions at their school. And finally, we've got a little, little um, picture there of one of our model making sessions. So once all the children have decided on their ideas for their chosen outside space, they were they um, made group models. And here are the nursery children from the Ely and Kyra Integrated uh, Children's Centre. I'm going to try and get this to play now. There we go. So we're here today Thanks, with Sophie. Isla. Give us a wave, Isla. Harper. Hello. Ezra. And Benji. Hi, guys. Now, you have been working so hard over the last few weeks, haven't you? And we've been working on the Michelson project. And you're going to talk us through all your lovely ideas for the community garden. The model that you've made in front of you looks very colourful. Um, can we please have... 
Benji to talk about some of the things which are in in your lovely community garden. Come on, Benji, talk us through a bit. Some trees. Some lovely trees. They look brilliant, don't they? Are they they big trees or small trees? Big trees. Big trees. Fantastic. Um, Ezra, can you talk to us about something else in the in the garden? I, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> okay, Harper, what can you tell us about your wonderful garden that you've made here? Um, um, this is my pink um, lollipop tree, actually tree, okay. and that's my birdie house. And there's a birdhouse which is here. Okay, um, lovely. Oh, that's a very nice tree, isn't it? I built that. Okay, that's good. That's good. Isla, can you tell us something about the community garden? That's a lovely tree as well. What's that blue thing in the middle, Isla? Waterfall. It's a waterfall fountain. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so what else have we got? What's this orange thing here? A line. A line. Is a it? Path. It's a path. Well done, Benji. Lovely work. Right, what else have we got? We've got some lovely little trees there. And then, oh, is that a play park, I see? And I that one. You did that one on the end. I Fabulous. That one, that one, <laughs> you worked very hard then, Isla. Um, yes? And, and you. <laughs> and I can see here we've got a lovely seesaw. We've got a fabulous slide as well. And are those carrots I can see? Yes. Yeah. Yes? We've got carrots and some other other vegetables growing there in the veg patch. Wow, guys, you have created the most amazing community garden, and I cannot wait, cannot wait to see what ideas we can take from this to put in the real one. Yeah. So, have you enjoyed your model making? Yeah, can we get a thumbs up? Yeah. Fantastic. Well done, team. <laughs> so the outcomes of this project have been extremely positive. The ideas everyone came up with uh, were well thought out and they could realistically be incorporated into the site design in time for the final planning submission. There are direct links between the plans and the reports used during the, our planning process and the ideas that were born during the project. As I mentioned earlier, the weekly road tenants experienced reduced involvement due to COVID, as well as a misunderstanding around the reason why we asked for the input. But by the end of the project, they were fully on board and we had a wonderful virtual session with them to get their thoughts and ideas on the community living element of the site, which is um, a development for people over the age of 55 um, or with um, with disabilities. They also gave us plenty of ideas for the wider site and their vision for the air was extremely clear and without any prompting, it actually aligned beautifully with the children's ideas, especially around the, the, the nature elements that they wanted to include. The other nice thing about these sessions were that, was that the children could, uh, we could open the children's eyes. wider engagement projects once the site has been fully approved by the council. So here uh, we've got a bit of feedback from the teaching staff and pupils involved in the project and I think um, that the, the quote that I really like is um, Sam's quote from Penn Kyra. I like seeing all the different spaces, uh, places on site and seeing what we can do to change things for the future. 
So on to a roundup of the figures for the whole project. There were 16 young people involved in the sessions, a total of seven older people engaged with us across the project. The project team and key delivery partners gave a combined total of 105 volunteering hours, which has an accumulated value um, of 5,775 in added social value. Um, this was calculated using the National Themes, Outcomes and Measures, or TOMS as they're affectionately known, which is a standard tool for measuring social value. Again, using the same tool, I calculated that the value of preparation and planning time came in at £2,062.50. And we were very conscious about using recycled materials for our model making sessions. So um, Louise, our late landscape architect, put us in touch with the Recreate Scrap Store in Cardiff, and we were able to use materials from there. One of the other costs that are incurred was through Grow Cardiff. Now, they are a fantastic organisation who deliver meaningful and worthwhile engagement all over the city for a range of different demographics. Due to their high demand, they actually have to charge for their time. And the sessions they delivered were fantastic and the price they asked for was worth every penny. The last costs we incurred were for printing of drawings, big plans from which the children worked, and these came in at roughly £50. So with all those outgoings um, totaled up, we spent the princely sum of £392.40, which for a 10-week project equates to just under £40 per session, which I think is really good value. Our next steps, so we're going to look at the um, the design team have been given all of the videos and photos of the children explaining their models um, and written descriptions of what we'd like to be considered for inclusion into the final design. Once they have worked their magic and put as many of the ideas in there as possible, they will be submitted for planning approval. And then the plan is to meet with everyone who took part in the project and give them a breakdown of what has been submitted. Um, and then once it's all been passed, we'll have a final session to celebrate which ideas have definitely been included in the Michelston development. And uh, one last word, I think Benji's top sums it up quite nicely.